This is the visitor center in Show Pond at Michigan's Wolf Lake State Fish Hatchery. The pond is stocked with steelhead and other species of fish raised here, and visitors can toss a little food and see Wolf Lake's end product up close. The Wolf Lake facility is an awesome place to take a walk. Its trails wind through a series of ponds and wetlands that draw a wide variety of waterfowl and other wildlife. But the action at Wolf Lake is inside these buildings, where seven different species of fish are reared from eggs to be stocked in lakes and rivers across Michigan. Uh, well, the Wolf Lake Fish Hatchery is one of six fish hatcheries run by the DNR. We are the southernmost hatchery here in Matawan, just west of Kalamazoo. We've now moved to seven different species of fish, lake sturgeon, walleye, northern pike, northern muskie, Chinook salmon, steelhead trout, and lake herring. Uh, we're in the fishery room here at the hatchery, and we're going to talk about what different things we feed fish and also how we get the eggs from the fish. So I'll start by talking a little bit about what we feed them. Uh, depends on what kind of fish it is, what we feed it. Salmon and trout are going to get these pellets here, you see in these bags, um, just little brown pellets, and they are a mixture of vitamins, minerals, and we actually grind up dead fish and put them into the pellets, um, kind of recreating nature right there in those little pellets. If you're a lake sturgeon here at the hatchery, we would feed you frozen bloodworms. If you were a muskie, we would feed you fathead minnows. Uh, pike and walleye are so small when they're at the hatchery that they're actually still feeding on their yolk sac, uh, which is basically a supply of food that they're born with. The method of egg take depends on the species of fish. Salmon and trout are herded into a weir like the one on the Little Manistee River. Walleye are electroshocked, and pike and muskie are caught with a trap net. Once the fish are captured, the eggs and milt are collected, mixed together gently, and transferred to a bucket. Then it's off to the hatchery. So we're standing in our incubation room, and this is where the newly fertilized eggs are going to go when they get to the hatchery, and it depends on what kind of egg it is, where it goes. Um, one type of apparatus we use is called a incubation tray, and this is for trout and salmon eggs. Their eggs are pretty big in comparison to our other fish like walleye. Uh, you can fit about 7,500 salmon eggs in each of these trays, which are about three quarts. You can fit about 18,000 steelhead trout eggs. And basically what happens is we put the eggs in the tray. There is a net, or a screen rather, on the top that keeps them in there. And there's water that's continually circulating through these trays. And that's keeping the eggs oxygenated. It's keeping them from sticking together. These are our incubation jars. This would be for our cool water fish. So that would be our pike, muskie, walleye, sturgeon. Uh, those fish eggs would go in here, and this pipe actually circulates water through these. Their eggs are much, much smaller. For example, one quart, which is this line here, can hold about 100,000 walleye eggs. After they hatch, they start to swim up, and they actually, the water will carry them, flow right into this trough here. And basically, we set up a series of pipes that's going to take them out into the tank room. So that was our fish feeder. It's got an automatic timer, releases it up in a few minutes. And what we're looking at here are Chinook salmon. There's about 60,000 in this tank right now. These are the fish feeders here, and then we've got these panels uh, on the sides here trying to keep the fish in the tank because salmon, as you know, are really good jumpers. So we're standing next to our lake sturgeon tank. We're the only hatchery in the state of Michigan that raises lake sturgeon. They're a threatened species here in Michigan. And typically we would get their eggs in May and we would raise them through about the end of October, beginning of November. We'd raise about 10,000 of them and they would be stacked in about 10 locations throughout the state and they would be about four or five inches in size. Uh, the fish we're looking at here range in in age from probably about four years old up to about 10 years old. And they're going to remain here at the hatchery for educational purposes. Okay, so we're standing in our raceway building and in these raceways behind me, we have steelhead trout. We have 12 raceways. These steelhead trout got to the hatchery approximately a year ago in about the middle of April. We raised them through the following April, so these are going to go out here shortly into rivers across Michigan. And we raise them to be about seven to eight inches in size, and it's going to be plus or minus, some will be a little bigger, some a little smaller. Uh, we raise about 800,000 steelhead trout every year. This water actually was in the tank room, and then it's going to cycle through the raceways. After it leaves the raceways, it's going to go through our series of ponds 
going to exit into Campbell Creek, then the Pawpaw River, then the St. Joe River, and eventually Lake Michigan. So we're standing in front of one of our planting vehicles, one of our planting trucks, and we have a variety of sizes, uh, ranging from this size all the way up to the size of a semi-truck, and all the way to the size of a pickup. These are specialized trucks. Uh, they have four different compartments on them. We have oxygen on all those tanks to keep those fish uh, nice and healthy because they're going to be pretty stressed out when they're in these tanks. Uh, we keep them for as little time as possible in the tanks because they do get stressed out. But we can use these vehicles to transport the fish from the hatcheries um, from here at Wolf Lake in southwest Michigan all the way up into the western upper peninsula.